Hello friends, I am Amir Anwar and today we are going to study the analysis of laminated composite plates based on Reddy's third order shear deformation theory. So we will have the MATLAB code for this because in the last lecture or uh, the second last lecture we have already studied uh, the theory regarding the uh, Reddy's third order shear deformation theory first order and all. So today we will have a MATLAB code, we will write a MATLAB code for this. So just have a brief review. So in Reddy's third order shear deformation theory, we know that the displacement fields are U, V, W, X, Y, Z, where U of X, Y, Z is U naught plus Z times phi X plus Z cube, and this phi X plus del W naught by del X. Similarly, in the uh, Y directions, we are having V displacements and W of X, Y, Z is equal to W naught of X, Y, where it is not the function of Z, but it's a constant. So we will see the number of unknowns as u naught v naught w naught phi x and phi y so it is also having five number of unknowns as like uh, first order shear deformation theory so same number of unknowns are there okay so in both the uh, deformation theory we are having the same number of unknowns so what would be the advantages uh, of this third order shear deformation theory over the first order shear deformation theory that we will see that in the third of the, in the first order shear deformation theory the transverse shear strain were constant throughout the thickness but here we will see that it it would be z, z square means quadratic throughout the thickness okay and when we will have the values of uh, at top and bottom we will feed the value of minus h by 2 and plus h by 2 so it would become zero so the strain would be zero at top and bottom so it would fulfill the criteria of the condition shear stress free conditions so here it is note that gamma xz and gamma yz is quadratically varying through the thickness of the plate and the transverse shear stress satisfies shear free conditions at the top and bottom of the plate okay so this were the theory so we will now go to the matlab and we will start our work so it is our MATLAB code and we will see the third order radius work for symmetric cross ply laminates. We will first give the required input data that number of layers, number of points in each lamina, similarly load parameters we will define here and then material parameter, geometry or dimensions of the laminated composite plates we are given LX, LY and the total height it will ask to us and we will provide in the radius third order shear deformation constant coefficients so these are the coefficients c1 c2 so when uh, we will study this we will see this c1 and c2 is this value and m and nn these are the constant values laminate coordinates and its interfaces we have written the code for this that we will get the interfaces of the lamina. Then the material properties are given here and constitutive properties in the fiber direction are already given. Then assigned coordinates. Then the lamina orientation and transform constitutive properties here. So these all were defined in the previous lectures we have studied. So from the first uh, classical laminated plate theory, we have studied in detail. So the same we are repeating, just with the five unknowns we are done here. So now here, from here we can see that uh, we, we will get the all the unknowns. So. If we get the unknowns, we can find here the strains and stresses. So all the displacements will be U, V, W will get. Then it's strain, in plane strain. Similarly, in plane stresses. Then shear strain we will get. And out of plane or transfer shear stresses. So finally, we will get the results and we will plot the results. So let's run this code. So it is asking the number of composite plate lamina. So we will give three lamina because we are taking cross ply laminate for three lamina. 
number of points in the z direction for plotting we will take 20 into the height of the laminate so we will give 0 0.25 into the thickness of interface of first layer of the plate so we will give 0 0.25 divided by 3 0 0.25 divided by 3 0 0.25 orientation 0 90 degree second layer third layer 0 again it is asking 0 second layer is 90 degree third layer 0 so we will see the plot now okay so it has given us the plot so it is the plot of the so from first we will start from the displacement field let's start this is the displacement okay Let's start with the first one. It is giving the sigma yz, means transfer shear stresses from the constitutive equations. So at top and bottom of the plate, we can see from here that what it is provided, that at top and bottom, it is the transfer shear stress is almost zero. Okay. And then there is a jump. Okay, at the same level there is a jump in this stress. So this jump should not be there. Okay, in uh, means three-dimensional elasticity theory, we didn't get any jump. Okay, so we will see that it is the limitation limitations of this theory that we get the jump here at the lamina interfaces. Okay, similarly at this lamina interfaces also we get the jump here, but it is better. This result is better than the first order shear deformation theory as it satisfies the top and bottom stress free conditions. Okay, so we will see the another, and this is the sigma exit where also the top and bottom shear stress free conditions are there. Okay, and it also shows the jump at this position at this interfaces, and similarly at this interfaces, there is a jump. And in actual, it should not be there. Then we will see the sigma axis in plane stresses. So, in plane stresses, is somehow better. And in plane stress, sigma yy is there, which also gives a better result than the first order shear deformation theory. Then we will have ux in plane stresses along the x direction. So it is showing the warping of the plane, that how it uh, warping of the uh, plate, that how it is uh, having its cross section warped. Whereas in the first order shear deformation theory and classical laminated plate theory, it was linear. But here it is not linear, but it is showing the warping function. Okay. So along the y direction also, it is showing the warping. And this is the transfer shear stresses, which is calculated from the equilibrium equations, not from the constitutive equation, but the equilibrium equation. So we are getting very close to the exact results. Okay. So uh, this we have got from the applying the three-dimensional equilibrium equations. Similarly, this sigma yz also we got from the equilibrium equations, not from the constitutive. Okay, so we can see that here it is continuously varying, and it is the in-plane shear stress sigma xy. Now we will see that here it is sigma xz, and this is it is showing results from the equilibrium equations and this is from the constitutive equations so we can see the difference from the equilibrium equations and the constitutive equations okay and similarly you will see that this is from the constitutive equations blue line and this red line is from the equilibrium equations so equilibrium equations it is very close to the exact results whereas this constitutive equations is much farther than that. So, 
we have seen that it is third order shear deformation theory so this uh, we can see that this differences are very large for a very thick plate because we have considered a by h equals to 4 ratio so therefore this is very large but as we will reduce or the plane would become thick the results would vary close to each other so we have seen the reduced third order shear deformation theory thank you